many, many moons ago, I had a mentor, an engineering mentor, by the name of Steve Bowman. And as we worked together, there were certain phrases that he would use all the time, which I began to describe many, many years later as the tenets of Bowmanism. They were rooted in his philosophy of how to approach engineering, and in a larger sense, life. And the tenets of Bowmanism are these. The first tenet of Bowmanism is, life is good. This is a phrase that he would use, first of all, obviously when things are going well, the test passes, things work, life is good. When things are going very badly, it was an important reminder. Well, life is good, we're going to get through this. Very positive, wonderful kind of thing. The third tenet of Bowmanism when things were really not going very well, and exasperation was perhaps setting in, is, I'm getting too old for this shit. Extremely funny at the time, but now that I'm at the age that he was when he was saying it, I can relate. I know exactly where he's coming from. Neither of these are the tenet of Bowmanism that applies to Fallout 76. Did you notice I skipped number two? The second tenet of Bowmanism, which is what applies here, is probably the most important and the center of all of Bowmanism. And that is, it is what it is. Now, that sounds like it's a very obvious thing, but something that people struggle with. One of the ways he would illustrate this is he had a story. He said, reality is the barf on the kitchen floor. Did you use vomit or barf? I use barf because it's less nauseating than the word vomit, for me personally. I don't know about you. Comment in the description if you prefer barf or vomit. But, let's say you have a party, someone barfs on the kitchen floor. The sooner you accept that it is there, it is what it is, and take care of it, the easier it will be to take care of. The sooner you deal with it, the easier it will be to clean up. And that is true in everything. The longer you deny something is there, the longer you deny something is real, or that something is what it is, the harder it is to deal with it. And this is exactly what people are not doing with Fallout 76. They're not doing this. They're not seeing it for being what it is. This is, I think, largely Todd Howard's fault, because I think he over he oversold this game. He, he built up everybody's expectations way too high for what it is. If he had simply named it Fallout Sandbox, instead of Fallout 76, then I think things would have gone a lot better. Because that's all this game is. It is a sandbox. Okay, here's what you do. Take Fallout 4. Please. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, take Fallout 4 and imagine how the play is in the game once you've beaten all the main quests. You've beaten all the DLCs, but you still like the game, so you're, you're building up your settlements. You're, you're exploring the nooks and crannies for little bits of lore that they've tucked in different places. Because that can go on forever with Fallout 4. I mean, I've, been, I've got... I have no idea how many hours into that game, and I'm not anywhere close to getting... I haven't even got all the main quests done. There's just so much little lore tucked in at it here and there. You get to the point where you've talked to all the NPCs in Fallout 4, so now you're just looking for the little bits of lore here and there, like the stuff you see in Hubris comics or stuff like that. You're just, you know, looking for all the little legendary weapons and, you know, fighting a bunch of different monsters and stuff like that. And, you know, you're cool with that. You're building up your settlements. You're, you're exploring the game. You know, Fallout games, you can explore them forever. That part of it, just that aspect, that's Fallout 76. That's all there is to that. Everything else is not in the game. And they probably took the effort they would have gone into making, say, Fallout 5, and put it into building up all of the resources that they need to have to make this multiplayer. Yes, the game is buggy as all get out. I mean, I couldn't even get out of Fallout 76 without having a bug. I hit the, uh, the washing machine just to see what kind of sounds the washing machine would make, and it uh, disconnected me from the server. I had to remake my character again. I can accept that, though. That's kind of what I expected out of this game. I did not expect it to run properly. and no, So I'm, I'm on board with it is what it is there. This is a Bethesda game. They do that. And you could say, well, this is a $60 game, and this isn't right. Look, it is what it is. Now, I'm not defending it from that point. I'm not saying it shouldn't be better, but it is what it is. Now, as far as should you play this game, if... Very similar to me, you like just kind of knocking around in a Fallout environment. 
finding bits of lore, bits of lore, not huge, not participating in huge amounts of lore. You know, if you're dealing with the NPCs, you're creating the history as things happen. In this game, you're just finding out history. You're going through a library. It's a library where, you know, the other people in the library are monsters who want to eat you. But, I mean, that's what it is. You are, you're basically exploring a giant library, going through a, a time warp history of sorts, and seeing what happened to the people right after the war. If you can enjoy that, if, that would, if you would find that interesting, if you would like to find out, you know, how did all of, a lot of the things that happened in, in Fallout, you know, start, then this game can work for you. I haven't gotten far enough into the game yet to uh, to find any of the lore-breaking kind of stuff. Like, I completely agree there's no way the Brotherhood of Steel should be in West Virginia. That doesn't make any sense to me. I mean, they pretty much, according to, uh, according to the accepted canon, uh, they hunkered down for a long time out west, and that's, you know... Not something that you can get around. I mean, there's just there's no reason for there to be brotherhood, you know, on the opposite side of the country just yet. It makes sense when you get to Fallout 3, because that's hundreds of years later. It would make sense that the brotherhood would be expanding, searching for technology. All of that makes perfect sense. And if, as you recall, I mean, the, the brotherhood that was in, you know, in D.C., they were an expeditionary force. I mean, they didn't have... It's not like they were checking up on a presence out here. They were coming from the West and, and exploring things. And the same thing goes for Boston. They're, they're continuing their expansion northward. So the fact that they would be here 25 years before and not have a much heavier presence just over the line into D.C., you know, that it doesn't make much sense. Maybe, when I get to that part of the game, there'll be some explanation. I'll be like, oh, okay, well, that's, you know, a complete retcon. But we'll, we'll go with it. We'll go with it. And, you know, we'll see how it goes. Or maybe I'll be completely annoyed at it. It's going to be interesting to see whether this turns out to be some insight into what happened with the Brotherhood during the years where a lot of stuff wasn't really, you know, discussed. I mean, there's a, there's a huge blank period of Brotherhood history here that, you know, things could have happened. Or, I mean, this could be a Last Jedi, Jake Skywalker, make the fandom go, what the heck, this doesn't make any sense, you know, and make, make them hate the franchise from there on out. And, you know, maybe Fallout 76 will be completely rejected as canon. You know, who knows? If you don't like it, that's the beauty of art. You can, yourself, reject it as being what is in your Fallout universe and move on to the next thing. You don't have to worry about it. Just, you know, it'll, it may annoy you if you paid 60 bucks for the game, but... You know, it's a, it's a matter of that. Certain things do jump out at me. Like, when you come out of the vault, and there's all these trees, and all this plant life, and I know just over the border, in, in, in Washington, D.C., everything is freaking dead to the world. I mean, it is absolutely this green, gray, dead landscape. And, you know, I don't know too much about nuclear weapons, but I'm willing to bet that just, like, not 50 miles away, it's not going to be a lush and verdant paradise. It doesn't make any sense to me. Truth be told, you know what would make sense to me? It would make sense if we had the verdant lush greens in Fallout 3, because that's a couple hundred years later already, and, you know, stuff could have been recovering. Then you could have the landscape that you see in Fallout 7, at least in this one little part of Fallout 76. That would make sense. The you know, trees would have a chance to recover, because, I mean, after the radiation dies down... You know, you know, if there's still a little bit of life around, it would, you know, over hundreds of years, you know, nature does recover, and, and that makes sense to me. If nature hasn't recovered in the time of Fallout uh, 3, it sure, it sure as heck isn't going to look like this in Fallout 76. I mean, you're looking at, there's probably a decade of nuclear winter that went before this. At least, maybe two, some, some estimates say two decades, as far as I understand. I mean, this could be, no one really knows how long it will take all that smoke to come out of the sky, and... Uh, I, I know current estimates are 100 bombs and you're looking at, you know, pretty much worldwide starvation from nuclear winter. So, I mean, that doesn't make any sense that there's trees here. It looks pretty. It makes the game more enjoyable. I would say that, you know, it. Uh, I can see where they're going from a gameplay standpoint. And if you, you know, I, I'm, I'm okay with, you know, let's be honest. If you're playing Fallout and you're not okay with some breaks in reality just for gameplay... Then throw away your stim packs, throw away your rat away, all of that kind of stuff. Power armor saving you from jumping off. So, ooh, you know what? 
Shoddy cast ought to get on top of this. I mean, I can't wait for Austin Horrigan there to start doing the science of Fallout 76, because this is going to be great, because there is some stuff here that makes no sense whatsoever. But if you're a Fallout game player, if you're okay with that, you can live with it because it makes the game better. And All right, we'll go along with that. But it doesn't make any sense, as far as I can tell, you know, just on a cursory you know, basis. We'll see. Maybe there's some explanation down the road for this, but uh, I don't know what it would be. One criticism I would make of the game is that it would be nice if we could turn off the survival aspects of it. I mean, I don't play Fallout games with survival turned on, generally speaking. You know, I don't want to have to eat. I don't want to have to drink. I realize that's completely unreasonable as well, but you know, I just want, if I, like, for instance, I would like to just kind of bounce through this game, find all the lore, keep moving, do that sort of thing. But what you have to keep doing is you have to keep harvesting wood so that you can find food and then cook food because, I mean, I ate a raw potato and got dysentery. Insert Appalachian Trail joke here, okay? I've already got dysentery in the game. Um, and that, that makes your AP drain a, a huge amount, so you can't go as far and go as fast. It's really annoying. Um, so I'm having to build my base, but not too fast, because I need the wood to cook, and you need to have food, and you need to be able to purify water, because you're gonna get, you're gonna get dehydrated, and it's gonna make it impossible to play the game. Like, that slows the pace down of the game so much that eventually it becomes work like you really have to work to survive in the game and you could actually be a full-time job just collecting wood fighting off the monsters and you know just keeping yourself going it gets to be annoying after a while i can only hope that maybe after you build up a good reserve of cooked food that hopefully doesn't go bad the food goes bad quick it goes fast really quick, and that's uh, that's something that's again, it's very it, you have to stay focused on survival so much that it's hard to get to the lore. Now it makes for a game that will last a very long time, but maybe it'll just seem like it's lasting for a very long time. That's a <laughs> that's not a good thing. Also, you know, you might be wondering what's up with the little papered bags every time you drop something. Whenever you drop something, if you, it puts it in a little paper bag. Basically, it's a loot container so other people can find it and loot it and this and that as opposed to just having a gun on the ground. I, I have an idea of why they're doing this because now that when you drop something, it goes into a little paper bag. It's its own little container. You can then no longer do the, uh, the glitch to make your settlement size bigger, or in this case, your camp size bigger. If you drop weapons, they're in a bag. You can then no, not store them back in the camp. You can't store them back in the workshop. So the, the glitch that will save you from uh, from having a, a finite amount of build space is now gone. But from a from a logic point of view, where are you getting all these paper bags? I mean, seriously, you can make a house out of them at this point if you have an infinite amount of paper bags. That's just it doesn't make any sense. The other thing that people point out is, I guess, as you're following the main quest, where is how how many cases, how many Vault Tech cases with you know one. Uh, one hollow tape in them did the the overseer have because as you follow her along uh spoiler alert as you're following her from place to place every time she leaves you a tape she leaves it in a very obvious big blue case at least that's the ones i've seen and i'm looking she must have been really encumbered with all of these cases it does that does but again it's fallout you know suspend all uh, belief in logic you know ye who abandoned here or something i don't know you know where i'm going with this what am i gonna do with this game well i mean it's a little bit hard to do a voiceover while you're playing the game i have a few hours of of, of the early content of this I, I think i have a voiceover stuff for my first my first play of the game if i set my character up and had that glitch happen I, i'll probably upload that uh just so you can see the uh you know how it all started out for me I have a few hours, though, uh, where I've not voiced anything over because there's no push to talk. And there will be on, you know, the 4th, as of December 4th, there will be a push to talk button. And that might be there even before, you know, you get to see this video. It depends on when I get everything edited. Uh, so then from then on out, it will be easier to do the videos the way I do them because I won't be broadcasting everything I say to the world. Um... Which will make me some, like, well, first of all, I'll be talking to myself or talking to you, the person who's, like, not in the game. And I'll sound like I'm either crazy or a YouTuber. And I'm not sure how people will respond to either one. It, it will change what's going on. Oh, this guy's a YouTuber. Let's go screw with him. You know, you, you get a different experience for the game. So maybe when Push to Talk comes, you know, I, here's a trick. I know I can't compete with Oxhorn for lore. If you, if you want to see lore videos and stuff like that, go check out Oxhorn. 
he's uh, just incredible. And I mean, with the, with the with the rate he's cranking out videos, I mean, I cannot keep up with that. And he's uh, he's doing a great job with it. Somewhere in here, I I found there's I think I think they've acknowledged him from uh, Bethesda because there's a teddy bear. Uh, looks like somebody's play, like a dead guy's playing cards with a teddy bear. The teddy bear has all of the uh, the money, and the teddy bear is smoking a cigar and he's wearing a bowler hat, which are the cigar and the bowler hat are his uh, are his trademarks. So Oxhorn, they're they're looking out for you, buddy. It's, it's, I, thought, I didn't even take the hat. It was like I just left it there for my my initial playthrough. I might go back for it because I'm thinking, yeah, I wonder if a bowler hat would have like a plus something to it. I could probably use a a place to put the perk card, but. So I'm, I'm thinking I don't want to do just Lord kind of I don't want to try and compete with Oxhorn. I do have a couple friends who are thinking of getting the game, and so maybe when I put some stuff up here, it'll be from either a really weird stuff that happens when I'm playing by myself, or me I'll record our our adventures together in in Fallout. Done there. No, there's no there's no ambulance noises in the game. That's in real life. So maybe I'll share our, our adventures if they want them to be shared. I'll have to get some consensus from the crew there as if they, they want that done. So I don't know. There may not be a whole lot of Fallout 76 on this channel, even though I'll probably be playing the game. Maybe if I get a, a really cool camp built up, you know, I'll, I'll share some of that. Uh, truth be told, though, you know, I it's playing Fallout 76 mostly makes me miss playing Fallout 4. So there may be more Fallout 4 stuff coming. Then there will Fallout 76. We'll have to see how it all shakes out. But on this note, folks, I think I think the game is okay. I think it's not horrible. I It would be much better if this was Fallout 5 and Fallout 5 had multiplayer. If there was a main quest, obviously, you know, that had, that had you know, the depth and richness of at least Fallout 4. Certainly, uh, New Vegas would be better. If they could make something at the level of New Vegas with multiplayer, there you go. That's the game everyone's dreaming about. But you know, maybe hey, maybe they'll get that someday. I'll probably be it'll probably be ten years before they pull that off because they've got other projects in the in the meantime. But uh, in the meantime, it's again, if you want to go knock around in a Fallout universe multiplayer style with your buddies, uh, this is a game that works. You know, again, I've, I've heard people suggest that you know it'd be better if, you, if if buying one license allowed more than one person to play it, so that you can have the multiplayer for sixty bucks as opposed to. You know, everybody having to get their own copy for you know, 180 bucks, 240 bucks for four people to get together, and I'm I'm down with that sentiment. But you know, we'll see how as the prices drop on it. They've already they're already doing a lot of Black Friday sales and things like that, and I don't know if the prices are going back up. I really don't, because the one thing that you need here is if you're gonna have a multiplayer game, you need people in it, and if they're not selling enough people to you know, if not selling the game enough for people to be in it and keep it populated. Then it ain't gonna do well. It's not gonna, you know. One hopes that the servers will stay up for a very long time. You know, um, that's having been said, we'll see how it all plays out. But I, it's the kind of thing. If, if you want that kind of bare bones Fallout related thing, where you could go through, kill ghouls and, and monsters, and find some hollow tapes, and have you know, investigate the history of uh, of the Fallout universe a bit. And see some different sites and see some different, you know, some beautiful locations and some ugly locations and some things like that. And find out what was happening you know, right after the bombs dropped, only 20, you know. It, it really, there's a lot of stuff in the game that's right after the bombs dropped. Uh, if you're that into Fallout and you just want to find these things out, it's a perfect game for you. If you're expecting something that even has the complexity of Fallout 4, do not spend your money. You're going to get really disappointed. Because, I mean, everything, it's just... There, it's not that there's not that much content. There's a tremendous amount of content, but it's not delivered the way that you're used to. It's it's delivered in that side side quest, that stuff that you'd find in the in the in the nooks and crannies of the game that just give it that extra bit of flavor. You know, it's kind of like it's chicken soup with all the stuff you put in the chicken soup, but there's no chicken in it. But the flavor's there, but there's no chicken, and so if you can if you can deal with broth, then this is the game for you. And I think that's probably as far as I can stretch an analogy on this one, folks. Would that be a metaphor? I didn't use the actual word. Did I say like? I don't know. We have to go back and see if this is a metaphor or a simile. But on that note, this is your Black Knight. Have a great night. Okay, so I guess I guess we just have a cow on the roof now. That's like a thing. <laughs>